Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct, interpret, and even plot a two-way ANOVA. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. Before we get into two-way ANOVA, if you haven't had a moment to watch my one-way ANOVA video, I strongly suggest watching that because I'll be using the GLM tool, which is something that maybe you might not be familiar with. If you are familiar with it, let's jump right into it. A two-way ANOVA is our way to look at two different categorical variables and see if they are dependent on one another and how they predict a third continuous variable. We're going to start with a really simple case where we're going to have what's called a two by two ANOVA, and then we'll build to something a little more complicated as we progress. So the variables I'm going to use are towards the bottom. It's two demographic variables. I'm going to use gender right here and citizenship, which is right here. Citizenship already only has two levels. Are you a US citizen? Yes or no. But gender actually starts at three levels, one, two, and three, three being other. And so to keep this simple, I'm going to exclude the cases where someone selects three or other. You, of course, can include all the variables, but for this demonstration, we'll make it easier. To do that, I'm going to use my select case tool, which is under data, select cases. And I'm going to say if condition is satisfied. Under if, I'm simply going to say if gender is less than three. So only the cases where it's one or two, which is male, female, will be included. If you're not familiar with this, I'll put a link to a video describing how to use the select case tool below. So I click continue and I click OK, and now we've got the data that we want. As an outcome variable, I'm going to use this variable called importance views, which is basically how important it is the number of views a video has in determining whether somebody's going to watch a video. And that's on a five point scale anchored with not at all important to extremely important. So to conduct a two way ANOVA, we go up to analyze, general linear model, univariate. And this is why I prefer teaching the GLM tool when we do one-way ANOVA, because it naturally extends to more complex analyses like we're about to run right now. For our independent variables, we're going to put those in the fixed factor. In this case, we're going to include gender and citizenship. In the dependent variable, we'll include our importance measure, which is right here, importance views. And there's a few things we can consider. So first of all, if we click on model, we'll see that by default, this is going to run the full factorial model, which means it will include in our analysis, a main effect for gender, a main effect for citizen, and the interaction of those two. We can certainly change that model, but that's exactly what I want. So I'll leave the default as it is. There's not much under contracts that we want. We're going to want a plot that's going to be great. And the way we're going to define our plot is having one of these as our horizontal axis and one of those as separate lines, basically grouping. It really depends on what your hypothesis that you're testing is, which orientation you prefer. So I'm going to select gender as a horizontal axis and citizen as the separate lines, and then I'm going to click add. If you want to see the opposite version, you can do that. You could put citizen as the horizontal axis, gender as the separate lines, and then click add again. And that'll give you two different ways to graph this. I prefer bar charts and I like error bars. So I'm going to select those two options and then I'll click continue. There's really not much I'm going to want in terms of post hoc analyses because this is a two way analysis and post hocs aren't quite as useful, but I definitely want my estimated marginal means. And in fact, I'm going to select everything and move it over to display means for the most important one will be that bottom, which is gender by citizen. And that'll give me that pivot table showing the partial means for each of those groups. And then I'll click continue. There's really nothing else I need to select. So I'll just hit okay. The first thing I find is this version of a frequency table, which tells me how many individuals fall into each of these categories. So there's 363 males, 634 females, 53 no citizens, and 944 citizens. Then I get this test of between subject effects, which we've seen before if you looked at my ANOVA video. First thing we see is that gender on its own does not have a main effect. That is not a significant effect, meaning on average, the response to this outcome variable is the same or not distinguishable between male and female respondents we see that citizenship has what we typically call a marginal effect slightly above 0.05, where maybe there's some sort of subtle difference that we don't have enough power to detect, suggesting that there might be a difference between citizens and non-citizens on their response to this question. But critically, what we see is the gender by citizenship interaction, which is right here. One thing that's really important to point out that often people mistake is that the presence or absence of these main effects is irrelevant to the determination of whether there is a statistically significant interaction. And we'll see why that is in just a second. Going down a little bit more, we get our estimated marginal means. And again, the most interesting one is right here. It's this table, which tells me the conditional means. It's saying, if you're male and you're not a citizen, what was the average response to this question? If you're male and you are a citizen, what was the average response? And separately, if you were female, 
and not a citizen versus female and a citizen. And really, we can read this best if we look at these figures. So just as a reminder, I've plotted two separate figures. You could see them here. They're the same exact data. I've just flipped which axis orientation we're focusing on. For simplicity, I'll just look at this bottom one where citizen is on the horizontal axis and gender is what's separated out. What the interaction is telling us is that the difference between this blue and red bar and this blue and red bar is different. In other words, there's a difference between the differences. That's the interpretation of that meaningful interaction. Visually, we can see that it seems like when you're not a citizen, females tend to respond higher. And when you are a citizen, there's less of a difference. If you feel like you want a different interpretation, you could look at it pivot the other way, where you say, if you're a female and you're not a citizen, you tend to respond more favorably to this option than if you are a citizen and not much going on for males. We can, of course, dig in a little deeper and do the post hoc analyses or the planned contrasts here, but that's something I'll save for a future video because it really does get into the weeds a little bit. So that's it for a simple 2x2 two two ANOVA, but what if we had more levels within a variable? Let's take a look at what that would be like. And in fact, I'm going to stick with gender because male-female is pretty easy to interpret, but I'm instead going to use the variable minute watch to cross with it. Minute watch, I'll show you over here, is a categorical variable which describes the number of minutes someone watches YouTube on a given day, and it's broken up into 1 equals 0 minutes, 2 equals 1 to 30 minutes, and so on. So again, categorical variable minute watch crossed with gender, which is a two-level categorical variable, and predicting, let's just say, the same variable. So under analyze, general linear model, univariate, I'm going to swap out citizen and include minute watch. I now do have to reset some of my options because they were predicated in me having that citizen variable in there. So for plots, I will then have gender by minutes watch, and I'll just keep the one for now. And under EM means I have to bring all those back. Everything else can stay the same. So I click OK. And now we find here's our result. First of all, Minute Watch has its own separate main effect, meaning there is a difference in this response as a function of how many minutes somebody watches. Gender does not have its own main effect, and there's, for lack of a better descriptor, a marginally significant two way interaction. Scrolling down to these estimated marginal means, we see the full table describing the means conditional on those two different groups. And perhaps most interesting, we see our interaction visualized below. So here we see that for male respondents, depending on how many minutes they watch, there's a strong relationship between the response time and the answer to this question. And for females, perhaps that is a little bit of a smaller difference. This interaction is actually quite a bit more difficult for us to interpret, which is where playing contrast might come in. And again, we'll cover that in a future video. So this is the point in the video where I ask you to pause and try this on your own. And in particular, why don't you go ahead and do this? Let's stick with gender, but this time let's cross it with education, which is another categorical variable, which indicates the level of education someone has, and it does so in the following ways. It's actually a seven item scale where one is less than high school education, two is in high school, three is high school graduate, and so on. And let's see what that looks like for the outcome variable average opinion, which is the average opinion across a number of options that people have towards YouTube. So go ahead and pause the video and give that a try, and I'll show you what it looks like when you return. All right, hopefully you've gone ahead and done that, and so will I. If I go up to Analyze, General Linear Model Univariate, I'll just reset this so we're starting from scratch. We said we were going to use Gender crossed with Education, and we'll try and predict this average opinion variable. Again, under Plots, I'm going to pick in orientation that I want. In this case, let's put gender as separate lines and education on the horizontal axis. We'll add that, ask for bar charts, and include the error bars. Under EM means, we're going to include everything over here. And that's actually all I'm going to do. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And I see that there is a main effect of education. I see that because this is a significant coefficient. I see there's no main effect of gender, and there's really no statistically significant interaction. But let's explore it anyway, just so we see what that looks like. Here are our estimated marginal means. We see those conditional on both the gender and the education level. And here's our plot. The lack of an interaction basically tells me that the difference between these blue and red bars is the same regardless of education level. In other words, the difference between gender is not dependent on the difference in education level. So our two-way ANOVA is an incredibly useful tool for looking at two categorical variables and how they relate to one another in predicting a third continuous outcome variable. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, 
but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.